I had a buddy of mine ask me for dating advice, you know, for dating women and finding a good woman, all that stuff. Um, you know, I, I have to say this as a Christian, I haven't always been um, sold out to Jesus. I have had seasons in my life where I did not handle things in a way that honored God, and I'm fully aware of that, and uh, I'm not proud of that. But what I can say is that, biblically speaking, I think we have to get away from the idea of there being the one. And when I say the one, I mean that God has chosen one particular person for you out there, and you have to you know, stress and freak out and worry yourself to death trying to find that that magical spiritual leprechaun that has been deemed yours. Um, the reason I say this is because there's a portion in the scriptures where um, Paul is addressing uh, the church and he's advising women who are widows whose husbands have died that they should remarry. Uh, in certain situations so that tells me that God has not ordained only one person in the whole entire universe that is yours and no one else um, I also say this because I myself have been through a divorce um, and my wife Hannah is the greatest blessing on planet earth um, so when it comes to dating, you know, as, as a Christian looking for a good woman or a good man, whatever, whoever's listening to this, uh, I think you have to let go of the idea that there's a mysterious spiritual leprechaun out there that's been assigned to you specifically and that it, you know, and you have to stress and freak out and pray and fast and uh, worry yourself to death hoping that you, you find that one person. I think that, you know, just to say it bluntly, there's millions and millions and billions of people in the world and you know you could be compatible um, with with a handful of people and I think the goal of dating is to find compatibility and to find someone compatible with you know the path that you're on and the direction that you're taking in life that is absolutely essential um, but dating is when you find that out most of the times. I know uh, some of my best friends, you know, the first person they dated, they ended up marrying and they've had an extremely healthy marriage ever since. But um, for most of uh, cases, it takes, you know, you being willing to have courage and put yourself out there and, you know, ask the girl out for coffee. You know what I'm saying? You know, ask the girl out to go grab a bite to eat you know you initiating putting yourself out there having the courage to you know put yourself out there ask the dang girl out if you're attracted to her and you know you love God and you know she loves God and um, that's what you're looking for then that's the pool of humans you should should look after or is, is someone who loves the same things you love uh, has the same spiritual walk that you're uh, aiming for things like that because there are certain um, certain things that are deal breakers and like I said I haven't always had this mindset but I can say now for sure a hundred percent that you know if you are someone who is religious uh, as a Christian then you need to um, let that be a deal breaker if that other person is not a Christian then uh, it's going to be very difficult if you have your sight set on and your heart set on following God um, and she or he does not then it's going to be like a tug of war you're going to be pulled in opposite directions you're going to have different uh, rules for morality and, and um, rules for the relationship so I think you know you definitely for one need to get rid of the idea that there's one particular mysterious God assigned person that you have to magically find out because uh, that puts a lot of pressure on folks and I don't think that's biblical based on the the portion of scripture that instructs 
uh, widows to uh, choose a person, um, a person, not the person, choose a person to and, and remarry, essentially, which eliminates the possibility of there being one single person because obviously this would have been the second marriage for that widow and Paul is instructing them. So, so basically, you don't have to take that pressure off yourself. Here's what I'm going to say. The one is the one that you choose. You know, once you choose the one, the one that you choose is now the one for you. And God does have a plan for marriage that it lasts forever. Um, unfortunately, things happen. Um, there is unfaithfulness and there is a lot of um, just awful things that can happen in life. And there are, uh, there are times when even God gives his blessing and says, you know, it's okay if you get divorced because of these you know few reasons um, which I'm gonna leave out of this video um, that's another another topic but God does expect that once you commit your life to someone that you remain faithful to them forever uh, for the rest of your life and that you have kids together and you you learn how to love each other and you learn how to love and it's it's not led it's not all about emotions man it's um, you know it's 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 learning to love that person and for some people they're more compatible so it's easier um, and so for some people they're less compatible so they have to do a little bit more work to get on the same page but nonetheless God says that you know once you choose this person and commit to this person that they are the one now and um, and I think I know that he expects us to to uh, honor him and, and, and honor others in our life like our kids and um, in, in keeping this so but to my to my younger brothers out there I'm just gonna tell you man you're gonna have to get your little heart broke most of you some of you is gonna get lucky and first person you take out for coffee or you know for Taco Bell or you might not nah, you might not get her back but you know you might first person you date you might end up marrying and, and end up having 13 kids and you know they start growing wings because they're perfect angel babies uh, but for the rest of us mere mortals, it's probably going to come down to you um, being attracted to someone and thinking, man, she's, she's hot. Or you, you ladies thinking, man, he's a, he must be a fireman, you know what I'm saying, or something like that. And then, you know, the attraction kind of, you know, sparks a little something in you. And then you got to have the courage to say, hey, hey, uh, you want to go, you want to, would you be willing to meet me for a little a glass of, of, of cool cold brew or or would you like to go uh, you know I don't know I'm, you figure that out don't be weird um, and then look at the end of the day if it don't go good you just got to be honest man and say hey uh, I just I just think we need to to uh, move on and and uh, but I do appreciate your time and thank you for meeting up and I think you're a nice person. I just don't think that we're 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 the best fit. And then, then you ask out the next one. And uh, maybe this is poor advice, but uh, I don't care. That's my advice to my friends: is you know, ask them out, go out. If you if it's, if it flows and you have a great time, then obviously I ain't got to convince you to ask them back out. You're gonna do that. Uh, but I wouldn't force it. If it don't go great, you're gonna have to get over the fear of offending people or hurting somebody's feelings because hurting somebody's feelings is part of dating somebody's gonna get hurt you know you're gonna have to hurt people finding the one person the best compatible person uh for you to, to commit your life to and guess what you're gonna get hurt too because not every person you take out is gonna just be oh you're the greatest thing that's ever walked the earth so uh you might get your little heart you know he <laughs> might hurt a little bit but uh anyways it's been nine minutes so if i had to recap don't feel pressure to find the one because guess who the one is the one that you choose the one that you commit your life to and when you commit to her big dog or lady um, you know God expects you to be faithful to them and learn to love them and learn learn what they need and then be there for them and for y'all to figure it out as a team y'all are now partners for life ride or die Bonnie or Clyde let's go baby and then you have babies because you was you know giving a little sugar and then ba bam she starts sprouting a bigger belly and then out comes the head and you got a child screaming at you it's amazing best thing ever but um you know 
I'm pro dating and pro marriage. Uh, God created it. It's a beautiful, amazing thing. I mean, Hannah is my best friend. I, I uh, one thing I t have also told people is when you start uh, having the desire to lay lay some sugar on your best friend, you want you, when you want to make out with your best friend, that's probably a good one to marry because you're gonna have to be more than just lovers. You feel me? You know what I'm saying, boys. You know what I'm saying, ladies. Y'all gonna have to be more than lovers because, uh, for example. Once you have a child, uh, you can't do much loving for a few weeks. So you got to have more than that in a relationship. And uh, uh, that's also very important. Come on. Um, but yeah, I think that's enough for now. You're going to have to get hurt. You're going to have to hurt some people. And uh, it's an adventure. So get out there and find your best friend that you want to kiss and marry her, get to put a ring on it, have some babies. Then you ain't got to grow up an old fart sitting on your couch watching Netflix and with three dogs and a squirrel um, lonely because you never were willing to get hurt or open your heart back up. And uh, I got to go. Peace.